Protests against anti-black racism have filled the streets in countries around the world in the past two weeks. And that was true in many smaller centers across the province too. Charnel Anderson is one of our Ontario hubs journalists covering the Northwest. She joins us now from Red Rock on the shores of Lake Superior to tell us what that looked like in her part of the world. Welcome to the show, Charnel. Hope you're well. I am. Thank you, Jan. Now, before we delve into your latest for TVO.org, of course, we are in the middle of a pandemic. So I thought, let's get an update on the COVID-19 cases in Northwestern Ontario. So since the pandemic began, there have been a total of 85 confirmed COVID-19 cases in the Thunder Bay region. Um, only four of those cases are currently active. Two people are in hospital with COVID-19, and there's been one COVID-19 related death in that period. Um, in the Northwestern Health Unit, uh, there's been a total of 27 confirmed COVID-19 cases. Uh, 22 of those cases are resolved. Um, over the weekend, the Northwestern Health Unit confirmed there are two positive COVID-19 cases um, in inmates in the Kenora Jail. Mm -hmm. um, there's also one positive COVID-19 case in White Dog First Nation. Uh, that's about 120 kilometers northwest of Kenora. Um, but the health unit says they don't think it's a case of local transmission. It's likely that person picked, uh, picked it up uh, on a recent trip to Thunder Bay. Now, life in many parts of the province, including Thunder Bay, uh, started to look a little more normal. Uh, the province opened a number of restaurants, retail spaces, and uh, services today. Do you think people are feeling confident with things restarting? Uh, yeah, so as of today, um, most of the province is moving into stage two, which means loosening um, a lot of public health restrictions that we've been under for about three months now. Um, that is except for the greater Toronto and Hamilton areas and Windsor and surrounding areas. They will remain in stage one for the time being. Uh, but the rest of us, um, we can go to the hair salon, we can go to a restaurant, you know, if it has a patio or another outdoor seating area. Um, we can go to the library, the community center, the mall. Um, but I don't think confidence is the right way to describe the way people are feeling. Um, I think there's cautious optimism um, and there's some concern as well, you know, I mean, because on one hand, the weather's getting warmer, it's summer, people want to go out and enjoy it. Um, but on the other hand, COVID-19 is still out there and people, you know, they want to protect themselves. They don't want to put themselves at risk. Charnel, this week on TBO.org, you wrote about a memorial for George Floyd, who was killed by police in Minneapolis. What was the response in Kenora where it was held? Yeah, so my fellow hubsters and I um, are working on a series of articles uh, about the responses to the death of George Floyd in our respective communities. Um, so on Monday in Kenora, a moment of silence was held for George Floyd. Um, a group held a moment of silence for eight minutes and 46 seconds, which is the same length of time that um, former officer Derek Chauvin had his neck on George, or had his knee on George Floyd's neck, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, about a group of 200 people joined and they marched from uh, the White Cat Pavilion to McLeod Park in Kenora. Um, you know, the vigil was a way to honor both George Floyd's memory, but also a way for people to express their feelings um, about the situation and as well as express support for Black and Indigenous communities in Kenora who are still experiencing racism. Now, you, of course, spoke to people at the rally, including one of the organizers. Uh, what did she have to say about uh, the importance um, of honoring George Floyd? So I spoke to Tani Cameron, who is one of the organizers of the vigil. Um, she's an indigenous woman who lives in, an indigenous woman who lives in Kenora. Um, you know, she told me she hasn't seen the whole video of George Floyd being killed, um, but she did see the part where he was calling out for his mother. And, you know, she told me that's what did it. Um, as an indigenous woman, she's experienced racism herself. Her parents experienced racism, her kids experienced racism. And, um, you know, that's why she felt compelled to organize this vigil. Now, of course, you also spoke to a woman who delivered a very powerful speech um, at the memorial. Uh, what did she have to tell you? Um, yeah, so Tanya invited her friend Katrina to speak at the rally. Um, Katrina is a black woman. She has two children. Um, they're mixed race. They're both black and indigenous. Um, Katrina was born in Washington, D.C., and she moved to Canada when she was 11 years old. Uh, you know, Katrina says there was only a handful of black people in Kenora at that time. And when she went to school, you know, she was bullied. She said that kids would make fun of her hair. They would call her the N-word. And now Katrina has a 15-year-old son who is going through a lot of the same things. Um, she, says, she says that he's being bullied at school. And, um, you know, kids are just telling him awful things. Kids are saying that he should kill himself. Um, 
And you know what she told me broke my heart because she said, you know, my son thinks what's the point of me being here? Um, you know, she says he's thinking things she never wants him to think. Uh, she tries to tell him to be strong. Um, but, you know, uh, Katrina, initially she was unsure about speaking at the rally. She was wondering if her opinion matters. Um, but ultimately she did. She spoke. She had her kids beside her. And she shared her experiences as a black woman, you know, living in Kenora. Uh, she told me, you know, she had to do it for herself and for her kids. And I think one thing that I, I took away from your article as well was, you know, that allyship between, um, you know, black, the black community and the indigenous community. What did you learn about allyship between anti-black racism and racism against indigenous people? Um, I think uh, Tanya put it pretty poignantly. She said, you know, there's a kinship between black people and indigenous people, a bad kinship at that. Mm -hmm. um, I also put this question to Katrina as well, you know, if she thinks black and uh anti-black and anti-indigenous racism are related she said yeah absolutely um of course the history is different for black and indigenous communities but a lot of the outcomes are the same um these outcomes have led to marginalization in black and indigenous communities uh however you know there's a lot of resilience within these communities as well there's a lot of strength to be found um you know i also ask these women what they want what they would like to see out of all this and Katrina says she just wants people to understand what it's like, you know, and try to understand what people are trying to accomplish with these protests. Um, and for her part, uh, Tanya said that she wishes politicians and people like Rex Murphy would stop saying that systemic racism isn't an issue in Canada um, mm -hmm. because, you know, there's still that denial of systemic racism. But Tanya says, talk to any black person or indigenous person in this country and ask them their experiences. Um, she says that we need to confront racism and we need to eradicate it. Charnel, I want to thank you so much for bringing that story to light. I also want to mention, uh, you mentioned off the top, throughout this week, our hubsters have spoken to activists across Ontario about the struggles about racism and violence, police violence in their communities and the changes they want to see. Uh, you can read all of that on our website at tvo.org. Charnel, I want to thank you again so much. Thanks, Jan. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.